ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وكل اصحابه اجمعين قال الله تعالى في الكتاب المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياه ليبلوكم ايكم احسن عملا وقال الله تعالى في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما خلقت الجن والانس الا ليعبدون عباد الله my dear brothers and sisters during this khutbah i want to address with you guys a topic subhanallah that requires a bit of thinking requires a bit of contemplation requires a bit of question and the topic as all of the topics of our khutbahs are is a topic of islam but specifically what is the power behind islam what makes islam so special what makes islam unique what distinguishes the islamic way of life from any other way of life what does it mean for each and every one of us when we say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rabbul rasul when we proclaim the tawhid when we say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah what does it mean what significance does it carry what importance does it bear in our lives have we thought about that or is it just something that has so become normal and it's significant that we just say it in our prayers it's like it's memorization it's routine it's mechanical it's robotic it's not even for myself something that i give my thought to what does it mean for me to be a muslim so i've asked a lot of questions i've got everybody thinking so the topic of my khutbah today is about the power of islam specifically about the power of change about the power of transformation when we say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah it's got to have an impact directly within our lives it's got to bring about some sort of change and that relates to if we take ayahs from the quran what i recited in the beginning of the khutbah surah mulk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us direct purpose. He says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ وَاعِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created death and life, but for what? Except to test those of you that are best in their deeds. أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا إِحْسَنًا أَحْسَنًا there's got to be a direct translation between our iman and some sort of change and some sort of transformation within us because without that it's just words that are coming out of our mouth it's just lip service allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i've not created human beings and the jinn except what illa ya'budun except to worship but how do you worship allah is it just coming to the masjid for prayers is it just giving the zakat no it's not it's more than that because those actions have to translate into change have to translate into a transformation what do i mean by all of this this is all lofty talk this is great the khatib is saying it what what, what does it mean well let's go back and let's take the at the very beginning of Islam when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving the message out what was he known as 
Before even the message of Islam came, before he got the first wahi, and before he started to invite others to Islam, what was the reputation of the Prophet Muhammad? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala please his lessons be upon him. He was known as what? He was known as Sadiq and Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy. The Islamic message had to be built on some sort of character foundation. The Prophet had that character instilled within him before even the message of Islam became formally introduced to the people of Mecca. So the Islamic message has really come down to us, has been revealed to all of mankind. Yes, illa li'abudun. Yes, li'abudun ayyukum ahsanu amala. But all of that, all of that condenses down to the essence of change. And it's change within each and every one of us. It's change within me, it's change within you, it's change within our children, and it's change that graduates, that permeates. When it starts from the individual, it goes to the family. It's contagious. Then when it starts from the family, then it becomes a group of families that form a community. And then when it, can, and when it permeates the community, it forms and it, it goes through a group of communities that become a society. The message here is established by what? The Islamic society of West Valley. And what is, that pur- what is the purpose of that society? What is the purpose of this masjid? What is the purpose of the community? What is the purpose of this family? What is the purpose of each and every one of us that are sitting here listening to me speak, including myself? Is to translate the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to human beings, you and me, into a change in our lives. It's got to bring about a positive impact. What are Muslims known for worldwide? Aside from the typical stereotypes, let's even stay away from terrorism and, 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 and all of that. Our Muslims have parking, parking problems. We have punctuality issues. What else? Okay, general stereotypes. But Muslims are known for because they can't eat pork, they can't drink. Is that what our reputation is? Is that what the Islamic message boils down to? Or is it much more than that? The Islamic message came why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qadr, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He's saying to the Prophet, and verily, you, O Muhammad وسلم, are an, on an exalted standard of character. It's got to be an example. It's got to be something, a model. When we go open, when we try to open up masjids in communities across America here, what's the first thing? Protest uh, and, 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 and an angry reaction. Vitriol. We don't want the masjid here. It's going to create this problem. We don't want the people here. Ground zero. A couple of years ago, big hoopla, Sarah Pale and everybody's getting involved. This is a slap in the face of, of the, uh, the people of, uh, that survived 9-11. How dare they try to open this? But if, think about it the other way around. What have we, what have I, what have all of us done to counter the stereotype, counter the image that Muslims have in society? Do people look to us and say, you know Muhammad, you know Zishan, you know Abdullah, you know Jawad, you know, but they're not like that. They're different. I've never heard him speak foully. I've always heard him to be honest. I can always trust his advice. I can turn to him for counsel. He can be my confidant. I see him as a leader. That change, the Islamic message can't be foreign to us. It's got to be inherent within our every action. So examples from history, examples of this change, they're apparent. Why they're apparent? All across the seal, all across when the Islamic message was introduced. 
Take the example of a man, subhanAllah. This man before Islam was an alcoholic. This man before Islam used to go in the nights of Mecca from one pub to another, intoxicated throughout the night. This man before Islam buried his own daughter alive. His own daughter alive. This man before Islam had a reputation, but wasn't a leader. This man who I'm speaking about is Omar ibn al-Khattab of the His example is what I'm going to use to say when you think about what it means to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah when you proclaim to yourself and everybody else that I'm Muslim think about this example So Umar radiallahu ta'ala yes before Islam he used to drink lots of stuff he had buddies and he used to go from one bar to another throughout the night, intoxicated and drunk. He was very dominant. People feared him. But he wasn't a leader. So let's take his story. And I'll give you the inception point of the change within his life. And I've said this story many times in smaller circles and I share this because like this boils down to the essence of Islam. So Omar, he had heard about the Islamic message. He had heard about this man named Muhammad telling people to forego the religion of their forefathers and follow something new. It had been building and escalating within him. It had been simmering within him. So what did he a point had come. It was a tipping point. It was a boiling point. He said, I've had enough. He unsheathed his sword and with the sword in his hand, he's hopping and purping and he's red and he's walking down the street. And he said, today, I'm going to put an end to this. It's bothered me enough. I've had enough of this. I can't take it. We're going to put an end to this new, strange message. So he's going down the street. And somebody who happens to be one of the companions at that time who had accepted Islam, the companions of the Prophet, he sees all. And like I said, people feared him. They knew this is a strong man. So when they see when he sees him upset, he says, Ya Allah. So he knew something was wrong. He says, What are you up to? If Omar is upset, he's got a sword in his hand, somebody's gonna get a hurt. Somebody's gonna get hurt. So Omar says, I've had enough. I'm going to kill Muhammad and put an end to the message that he's speaking. And as I mentioned, this was a companion of the Prophet. He had accepted Islam. So right away he's thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to kill our Prophet Muhammad. So Allah says, So what does he do? He diverts and he says, Omar. Before you go do that, why don't you clean up your own house within your own family? Your sister and her family have accepted Islam. So this infuriates him even more. My own family, my own sister, betrayal. He feels betrayed. So he's even more angry. So he changes his path and what does he do? He goes down to his sister's house. And as he approaches the house, He's hearing something being said or being recited. Something's going on. And now he's becoming more upset. What are they up to? What strange ritual? What are they doing? So he starts to bang on the door. And right away, his sister knows it's Omar at the door. She tells her husband, go and hide because if Omar finds you, that will be your end. So the, her husband goes and hides. She opens the door. He comes in. He says, what? 
you've accepted Islam. What was that you're reciting? Where's your husband? He starts to tear the house upside down. He finds the husband hiding somewhere, starts to beat him, starts to pound on him, starts to punch him. The husband falls on the floor. The wife, his sister, goes to save her husband. And he, Omar, strikes her. She falls down and starts to bleed. This is how upset Omar was. But the one he saw that he had struck his sister, and she's crying and in tears, and she's bleeding. He stops. He says, okay. What is it that I've heard? You guys have accepted Islam? What were you guys meaning when I approached this house? Because people used to think it was magic and sorcery and fortune telling. So she tells him, oh, first you need to calm down. Go wash up. Relax. And then what? He comes back and they recite to him the verses that they were reading at the time. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى and they go on until إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقيم الصلاة لذكري they start reading one verse after another this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has revealed the Qur'an to the human being. And it talks about His signs, it talks about His glory, it talks about His might. And as these verses are being recited, inadvertently tears are coming down Omar's eyes. Look at the change, look at the mindset. He was ready to kill Prophet Muhammad. He had struck his brother-in-law and his sister till they bled. But when the four, five, six, seven verses, words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being recited in front of him, in front of a heart that we apparently think is stone, in front of a heart that we think is closed, what starts to happen? The body reacts, the eyes react, he starts to tear, he starts to cry until it says, In many an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim salat al It says, I am Allah. There is no God but me. So worship me and establish your prayers. And that's where it stops. Have we exhibited a similar behavior when we've read these verses or when we've read other ayahs of the Quran? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to each of me and you, Alif la mim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the Quran and he says, What? This is the book in which there is no doubt. It's Hudan al-Muttaqeen. So what my heart jumps and says, I want to get to Hidayah. I want to be one of those that get to Hudan. So in fact, one we recite in each and every one of our prayers, even my five-year-old, six-year-old, and when he was four-year-old son, had it in my eyes. But have we translated those verses into action, into change? Think about it. I could go through the Surah Fatiha how long I wanted, we could dissect it. But it's got to bring about a change. So what happens after Omar? Here's these verses of Allah, these words of Allah from the Quran. He says, okay, he leaves his family to me, and he's going to continue on his path towards finding Muhammad. So Allah And at that time, they were gathering. Islam wasn't prevalent. It had not really gone out into the public. There was whispers that people knew about it, Omar heard about it. So they used to gather at different houses, secure, small, intimate settings. So the Prophet and the companions had gathered at someone's house. Omar found that house, and again, Bangs on the door. The other companions with the Prophet look at the door and they say, Omar is at the door. He seems upset. So they take out their swords. They said, it's about to go down. But look at it. The reaction of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells his companions, clear the way. Put your swords away. Relax. And let him enter. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting. 
They open the door. Omar walks through. Does not pay any attention to anybody else's direct sights on Prophet Muhammad. Comes, sits knee to knee, face to face. The Prophet says, You are Omar. Oh, Omar. What do you want? And Omar replies, I've come, bear, I've come to bear witness and declare, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad The change, that was the inception point. That was when the seed was planted. It changed him. So much so, that right after he became a Muslim, he said to the Muslims, he said, what are you doing? Hiding in these houses and proclaiming this message in secret and just going to your families. Go out. Declare it, proclaim it, let people know that this is a gift from Allah. So what did he do? By himself, he goes out and he says, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. He said, I've accepted Islam, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. He's going through the streets, fearless. So what do the people of Mecca start to do? They start to say, Omar's accepted the same thing and angry. A mom starts to form. They're pelting him with stones and they're beating him with punches and kicks. And he's still saying, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, until they beat him unconscious. Look at the man who I described before Islam. And look at what the change brought him. So much so that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if there was a Rasul, if there was a Prophet after me, and there will be none after me, it would have been Omar. So much so that they used to say, if Omar is walking down one alleyway, the shaitan runs the other way. Change. Transformation. An impact within our lives. That's what Islam is about. We all know the story of the Bedouin man that came into the masjid while the Prophet and his companions were sitting and gathering. And what did this Bedouin man do? Went to the side and started to urinate. If that happened here, I'd jump up and start, what are you doing? This is a sacred place. But how did the Prophet react? The Sahabas were ready, they said, decapitate him. He's defiling the house of Allah. The Prophet says, let him finish. Go clean it up and then submit. And the Prophet kindly told him, we don't do this. This is the house of Allah. That was the kindness, the character, the implementation of the Islamic message. The Prophet was a walking and talking Qur'an. So why not look at his character and see what the Islamic message is about? When he used to leave his house, Rasulullah every day without fail, his neighbor was a woman who did what? Throw trash on him. And this is a thing that we've heard and I've said so many times, but I still can't get over it. Trash. If I get a little stain on my shirt because I'm eating a burger, I start to go wipe away right away and I can't get it dirty. Or if my neighbor mows the lawn or blows some leaves onto my yard, I get a little upset. I just had this lawn manicured so nicely, landscaped, and the neighbor's blowing leaves. But his neighbor used to throw tra trash on him, the waste of the house, every day, without fear. And how did he react? He didn't even approach her. He didn't go knock on the door and say, excuse me, please, don't do this. He let it go because he understood the essence of this message. He let it go. Every day without fail, he let it go. Then one day what happened? He left his house. There's no trash. How would he react? I would react and say, Alhamdulillah. I was getting ready to do something crazy. But today there is no trash I'm going to go about. But we look at the character of the Prophet Muhammad to understand 
essence of the Islamic message. To understand this change. So he turned and he stopped. No trash. He went, knocked on her door. She opened the door, she was startled. She said, maybe he's here to take revenge. But no. He said, she said, why are you here? He said, every day, for the past so many amount of times, I've gone out and you've thrown trash on me. But today, I went in and you didn't throw trash on me. So I got worried about it. SubhanAllah. If we exhibited even an inkling of these type of characteristics, care, tenderness, truthfulness, honesty, leadership, these, these Islamic values, these Islamic values, I say, how would society and our communities react? Think about it. What have we done? What have I done? What have each and every one of us done to counter the stereotypes and the images that Muslims have? You've got to be at the forefront. There's a homeless feeling, I'm going to come out and give out of my pocket. There's a cleanup of the street in your neighborhood, you're the first one out with the broom and you're the last one to go. Because I want my neighborhood to be clean. Because cleanliness is an Islamic concept. We're permeating Islam in society in our communities. There was an injustice done to anybody within your work, within your neighborhood, within your city. You're at the forefront voicing your opinion saying this is unjust. This is unjust. Whether they're Muslim or not Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ was sent as Rahmatul lil alameen A mercy to mankind. To mankind. Not al muttaqeen not al muslimin not al mu'mineen Are we integrating that mercy to mankind? Are we bringing about the change when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah? Islam, the Islamic message, brothers and sisters, is a message of change. And we'll conclude in the second part of the khutbah. I know I'm running late. Just give me one or two minutes, inshallah. Wa akhoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'ahli li muslimina wa astaghfiruhu. Innahu huwa al ghafur rahim. We got Muslim engineers, we got Muslim doctors, we got Muslim physicists opening up businesses, forming companies, joining technology companies. So you got financial success. You got Muslims involved in the school, so the kids are becoming more academically excellent and pursuing academic success. Think about these factors. If Muslims entered a community, built a masjid there, and these were the repercussions of that masjid and of that Muslim community forming, people would be saying, come build a masjid here. We're in a recession. Come build a masjid here. Our schools need help. Come build a masjid here. We're in need of professionals to work at our company. It would be like a Walmart opening. People would be at the masjid and saying, yes, 
This is going to be a benefit to our society and our community. That's the vision I see, my brothers and sisters, of our masjids in the future, of our communities in the future. Because that's what the Islamic message is about. The Islamic message is about change. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to talk feet to understand truly the significance and importance of this message and bring about the necessary change within ourselves as individuals, within our families, within our communities, and within our society. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina wa sriqana bi rahmatika shara ma aatayt, fa inna ki taqdi wa la yibda alayt, la yaizu man aadayt, wa la yidillu ma wa aadayt, تبارك ربنا وتعالى ونستغفرك اللهم من كل جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالإحسان ويزايد القرب وينهى من الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين